All right, this is uh, the second video of the series of installing Informatica Power Center version 10.1 on a Ubuntu virtual machine running 16.04.02 utilizing Microsoft SQL Server as a database to hold the repository services. There's some prerequisites. We will need to have access to the Informatica.tar install file, the license, and we will need to have WinSkip installed. If we have those, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start up our virtual machine. And we'll go ahead and log in. Login will be DSC. And the password will be data, all lowercase. Let's go ahead and uh, log in as root. So sudo dash i. Password will be data all lowercase. Uh, first thing we will need to do, we will need to install open ssh dash server. So to do that, we'll type in apt-get install dash y open ssh dash server. And this will allow us to connect to the virtual machine via an SFTP connection which we'll be utilizing WinSkip to establish. All right, the installation is complete. Let's go ahead and grab our IP address for the virtual machine. Type in ifconfig, hit enter, and we'll want to notate the ENS33, and it's the INET ADDR. It's 192.168.208.129. I'll need to make a note of that. So we're going to switch over to WinSkip. So I've already created the connection, but in order to do so, you'll just type in the host name, ensure the port number is 22, the username will be DSC, and the password will be data. And you can save this so you can utilize this at a later date as well. Let's go ahead and log into the machine. Now, if you haven't logged in, it'll have you add the key, um, or in some cases, I'll have you update the key as well. So now we're logged into the home DSC directory on the virtual machine. So I'm going to now select my 10.1 server install and my active license. I'm going to drag those over. Now, this copy will take a while. Um, the tar file is rather large, so I'll, I'll pick this back up once the copy has been completed to the virtual machine. All right, our copy is nearing completion. Should be wrapping up here in the next few seconds. And now that we have it copied over, we are going to go and rename the license key file. Uh, currently, it's this very long string. So let's go ahead and just rename it. So right click and rename. Just rename it to license.key. Make things simple. Right now, once we have that done, go ahead and close WinSkip. Switch back over to the virtual machine. Just for the ease of install, we're going to create a, a new directory. But beforehand, let's go ahead and just check to see that the contents uh, have been added over to our home DSC directory. So to do so, let's just change over using the cd command to home slash DSC, and then ls-ltr will list the contents of it. So we can see that we have our tar and our license key. Let's go ahead and uh, make our new directory, the mkdir info. Let's go ahead and just check and make sure that the directory has been created. You can see that it's in there with the highlighted as blue. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new database to hold the Informatica domain services. So we're going to execute our SQL command, so SQL cmd-s localhost dash u will be sa and dash p will be data source 2017 with a capital D. Go ahead and hit enter and we're logged into the SQL server instance. So first, let's just select our databases that are currently available. So select name from sys.databases, semicolon, go, and enter. So you can see that we can 
still notate our power center repository database that we did create. So let's go ahead and uh, create our new one. So it'll be create database uh, info d for domain and v101 semicolon and go. Now just to validate that our database has been created, let's just execute the select statement that we used above just to identify the databases that do exist. We'll see that it has been added in. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll close the SQL connection. Uh, if you hit control C it'll just terminate the, con the connection immediately. So now that we have our database created, the next steps will be to actually extract the Informatica install files, which, which is the .tar extension file. To do so, we'll begin with the tar command. So it'll be T-A-R X-F, think of it as extract file, then hit 1 and tab, it'll auto-populate our file for us. And then we'll put in our target directory, oh, and I need to include a dash capital C slash home slash DSC. We're going to put in the new folder called info. Go ahead and hit enter. Now this will take a while to run. Um, upon completion it'll just bring back up to the, the root at Ubuntu. So I'll pause for now and pick up once the extraction is complete. Now the .tar has been successfully extracted, we're going to delete it to make sure we have plenty of uh, space for the install. So to do this, we're going to type in rm1 tab to auto-populate and hit enter. Go ahead and remove that tar file. Now we're going to switch over to the info in, uh, extract directory. So cd info. And then from here, ls-ltr just to display what is in this folder. And we're going to go ahead and get started with the install. So we'll type in uh, sh install dot sh. Hit enter. And this will take some time, uh, so I'll pause for now and continue once this has finished. So the unjar has completed, and so now we're going to go ahead and get started with the install. Um, so first, uh, we're going to type in a capital Y as we do want to continue, and this will configure some of the environment variables that we will need to have set up to execute the services. Now from here we're going to do an option 1 to install or upgrade Informatica. Now from here we're going to run the pre-installation system check tool. So this will be the option 1. Um, this will just ensure that we can log into our database and that everything uh, will successfully finish. Um, so this will go ahead and unpack the pre-installation check and from here we will step through that process. So we'll go ahead and hit enter here to continue on. And the, we're going to maintain the default directory of root. So go ahead and hit enter. We're also going to maintain the default starting port number of 6005. Then from here we're going to do option 2 since we'll be utilizing SQL Server. And for the database user ID we're going to add in SA. And the password is data source 2017 with capital D. From here we will not specify a schema name. We will not secure the database. We will configure the JDBC URL database connection string. Here we will enter in the host name which will be localhost followed by the port number which is 1433. Database name is the one we just created, so it's going to be info D V101. We will do option one to configure the JDBC parameters, and we will hit enter to leave them as default. Okay, we'll note that we will have some fails at the top, however, we are still set to go with the install as we're able to log in and the user has the correct permissions to execute the required database changes. From here we will execute option 2 to continue the install of Informatica services.
Right, from here we will do the default option of one to install Informatica 10.1.0. We will agree to the terms and conditions, so option two. We will select option one to install Informatica services. We will do option one. We will not enable And from here, we'll just hit enter to continue on with the installation. Now here, we'll need to add in the directory where our license.key file is. So this will be slash home slash DSC slash license.key. We will maintain the default installation directory of root. And we will go ahead and hit enter. Now this next step uh, will actually be installing the Informatica server software on the machine. Now this will take some time. Um, so as long as you're still seeing the percentage increasing, um, it will be incrementing uh, typically by five, um, just to indicate that it is actually progressing through the installation. So I will pause for now and resume once this step has completed. Installation has completed, so we're moving on to the next step, which is creating the domain. So we're going to utilize option one to create a domain, as this is a new install. We will do option one to not secure communication. However, we will enable HTTPS for Informatic Administrator. So option one. Maintain the default port of 8443. Use a key store file generated by the installer. So this will be option one. Validate that SQL Server is selected. Verify the user is SA. Provide the user password, which is data source 2017 with a capital D. We will not specify the schema name. We will configure the JDBC URL a database connection string just to verify its local host at 1433. Verify the database info DV101. Configure the JDBC parameters and utilize the default values. Keyword. I'm going to provide a data source 2017 with a capital D. This field cannot be left blank. I'm going to utilize the default key directory. Now notate if this, this key is required um, if we are to move the, the domain or the repository. So here you, you can use the default value of domain, however, uh, I typically we'll rename this. So for this, let's go with uh, a domain underscore DSC. Now we will maintain the default value for the host name of Ubuntu. Default node name. Default port number. Default username. And for the administrator password, we're going to do data source 2017 with a capital D again. Confirm the password. We will not display advanced port configuration. We will configure the model repository service and the data integration service at a later time. So we'll do option two. The next steps will take some time as it is configuring the domain, um, enabling the, and pinging the services and the administrative console. So the setup has been going through starting the services, pinging the domain, and pinging the administrative service. Once that is successful, you'll get the success notification. Uh, you'll notate the Informatic Administrative homepage, which is the host machine at 6008. Here we'll go ahead and hit enter and this will end the installation of Informatica 10.1 Server Edition. 
Next steps will be to enable the service and attempt to establish a connection to the Informatica administrative console from our local data source laptop. So to review, we have installed and successfully tested the Informatica services on this Ubuntu virtual machine.